All right, a couple of you guys spotted this treasure on eBay and were kind enough to send me a link and ask me to take a look at it. It's some kind of electrical disconnect, a safety switch of some sort. It says safety all over it. Safety key, SK1, and I have the key there in a minute. Uh, e IE1000 ES1, got no idea. There's the wiring diagram, got a serial number, and that's it. I, I, don't, I don't know what it goes to. Um, I can speculate, but we'll talk about that in just a minute. So we have a little little protective cover, and there is our lock. Um, I think right away you can see it's a tubular lock of some kind, kind of like a super size on steroids. And it looks like there's four different uh, pins there around the perimeter. And then there's something in the middle. So before we go messing around with that, let's take a look at the key, show you how it works. There's your key. And we shove it in like that, and then you really have to shove down hard. A lot of spring pressure on that to overcome. You push in, you turn it, and then it's key retaining. So when I look at this, it, at this point, the power can be either on or off. It depends how you wire it up. You got the, the poles here, it tells you. So if the machine operator is working, he turns it on, he leaves the key, and his key retaining so it's not going to fall out. He can work when he's ready to go to lunch or he wants to you know, work on the machine, he obviously would turn it and remove the key and it would be off. Or this could be on all the time in order to deactivate it, you would turn that in there, like a security measure, deactivating the power to like uh, exterior doors, for example. I, I really don't know, but it doesn't matter because we got to figure out how to pick this thing. So before we get too much into it, I want to take a look at the key. The key looks exactly like you would expect. We got the cuts for the pins on the outer part of the tubular key, and we got some weirdness here. We got some things that don't have to be there unless they serve a purpose. Got this little angled guy here, and we're looking around the side of there. There's also a hole right there. They didn't have to drill that hole, but they did for a reason. And that, I think, is probably to fit this little lever guy right here. And if we slide him out, you can see it's got a little claw when you look at the side. And what I, what I believe, that's the key retaining mechanism. So when we shove that down, that angle part pushes this little piece forward, forcing that little claw into, into that hole. So that's important, but I also noticed that when you push that little claw forward, in the bottom of the lock, there's a, there's a cutout on the bottom there as well. And a part of that little arm plunges down inside of there. So my theory is that's actually one of the pins. That's one of the unlocking mechanisms for the entire lock. So it's kind of a five-pinner, I guess. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to, let me see if I can grab a, grab a tensioner here. This is a, the two millimeter. I'm going to use him as a tensioner. And just apply it like that and just check, just check this. So I've, when I flip him over there and I take this and I push him forward, see it definitely is seized up now. So release a little tension. And now notice how that center core moves now. So he's definitely part of the unlock process. So now it looks like he's deactivated. The key is retained because that claw is extended. Now I just need to pick those four. So rather than do it at this angle, I'm gonna take the camera and try to move it down right above the lock so you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm probably gonna use, let me grab one here. I'm probably gonna use a screwdriver because there's plenty of room in order to get down there. So hopefully you'll just see the tip of that screwdriver. All right, that ought to work, I think. Uh, where'd that tensioner go? There we go. All right, so let's shove it over there. That little claw did not retract. I'm gonna make sure he's, so it's still moving. All right, so now let's just start mashing these guys, I guess. You got a nice click. I got a lot of tension on this. It takes an awful lot to turn this guy. Nice big solid clunk on that one. Okay, there was no clunk on him, but he stayed all the way down. So I might have overset that one. Let's try this guy. A 
Wow. It really takes a lot of pressure. These pins have a very strong spring on them. And there we go. Wow. I'm almost bending my tension wrench getting this thing picked. So there you go. The, let me back this guy up. The IE-1000, I'm not going to do it all the way because then the pins will pop up and I'll have to repick it. I don't want to have to go through that. Um, but anyway, it, that's how you pick this guy. Um, yeah, kind of an unusual lock. Anyway, I appreciate you guys really bird-dogging this for me. I never would have found this had you guys not taken the time to find it and then take the time to send me the link to, to grab a hold of it. Appreciate your time, guys. Stay safe. Stay legal. All right, I knew if I didn't take this apart, you guys would be throwing big rocks at me. And no springs or anything flew out of there. That's good. Uh, yeah, we're not going to be taking that lock apart. That's a solid aluminum body on that guy. It looks like a quarter inch shaft that sticks down into this guy. Oh, I see how that works. So when that shaft is in there, it will turn this oblong this oval thing so that it activates those switches when it's like that it's in one position and then when you unlock it those little plungers come right back out and either deactivate or activate the switch it looks like you can wire it up either way ah! no, just